Chicago. Welcome, Chicago. welcome, welcome to another edition of All Ball Chicago. I'm your co-host, Robert Bobby Reed, and I got the legend, the NBA veteran, the McDonald All-American, your host, Marcus Limit in the building. What's up, Marcus? What's up, my beautiful people? And we got a special guest in here today. You know I love the point guards. One of Aurora's finest, uh, dominated at Aurora East, coming out of high school, went on to be Mr. Basketball in Illinois, went on to UConn and win a national championship, then to the pro. Give it up for Ryan Boatwright, man. What's up, boy? What's happening, man? How y'all doing? Man, we all good, big baby. We got the, but you know what, man? PG's just all over the state, man. Chicago, the state of Illinois. This is big. We breed good point guards, man. Just, just go ahead and say it, man. And Ryan was, yeah, Ryan, you definitely was one of those point guards, man, that did his thing in Chicago and the state of Illinois and represent Aurora, man, like you always did. Um, let's jump right in it. We always go in there. So, who put the rock in your hand, man, when you was a shorty? Man, Mom Dukes, really. It was my mama and, um, you know, my grandfather, obviously. My pops, too, though. Like, it really was my mom. Um, your mom, know, she, your mom, who? Now, nah, my mom didn't hoop, you know what I'm saying? But my family hooped, so, you know, but I, my mom had me young. So, okay. You know, my mom, and then my mom was living with my grandparents when she first had, when she first had me. So, you know, my grandpa was all the sports, but, you okay. know. My mom just put that. She like, you know how you get a, uh, you get a baby's like um, toys and stuff. Right. You just put a bunch of basketballs, like little cushion balls and stuff, in my crib and stuff. And I just I held on to it ever since. Oh, I, I was gonna say maybe he's one of those kids that's running around the house. She's like, I gotta find something for this boy to do. I mean that too, but I'm talking about way back when. You know, I got pictures when I was, you know, what I'm saying a baby, baby, and it's a bunch of basketballs in the crib and stuff. So wow, that's wow. It started that, but yeah, you know, I was my grandfather used to train my auntie actually, Tominique, and uh, I used to always be in the way all the time, and, and to get me out the way, he had just put me through stuff like. Here, man, take this ball and dribble up and down the block. Dribble to the corner and come back with your left hand. Wow. Dribble to the back with your right hand. And just so I can get out of the way so he can train my auntie. I was always. <laughs> <laughs> Literally know that actually worked out, right? It did, I'm telling, right? You, <laughs> telling you, man. It's it's stories like that, man, that everybody's story is kind of different, man, and, and how, you know, people talk. Like, my dad did me, your mom helped you, died you and your uncles and family members showed you some love and showed you the game. Uh, yeah. So when you started uh, doing all that, learning the game, when did you start feeling that, you know what, I can I can probably do something with this, 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 this 29.5 in my hand? Uh, man, I mean, I started really wanting to hoop young. Like I was playing at the YMCA and stuff uh, probably about first grade second grade, but I ain't really start taking it serious, serious, like actually going to train and stuff till about fifth, sixth grade. You know what I mean? Like I always loved the game. I'd be at the parks playing and stuff like that, but I wasn't never doing no like, you know, drills or like going to the gym by myself or nothing like that. Probably until about fifth, sixth grade when I realized okay. I could do something. With it. Now, you are, how tall are you? Went to the combine. They got me at five eleven and some change, but you know. Okay. I, <laughs> okay. I mean, you broke up that last part. What you say, Ryan? But what? I, when I went to the combine, they had me at five eleven and some change. But you know, when we hooping, we got shoes on, so I, I claim six feet. Right. That's what's up. That's what's okay. up. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna say, are we gonna talk about you? You, you, you six foot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Six footer. Uh, so, when did you? Because I, I see that explosiveness, that bounce. Were you dunking in elementary school or, you know, <laughs> or, or a, a, a high school was your first time yeah. dunking? When was you, when did you get that first dunk? First dunk was eighth grade. Wow. <laughs> 14. Yeah, I was 14 on my first dunk. Wow. It wasn't dad, one of those. Was it one of those fingertip dunks or it was a bang? No, it was a dunk. It was a dunk. It was a one-hand dunk. It was a one-hand okay. dunk. Yeah. The crowd went crazy, right? Yeah, they could. They 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 went crazy, but it was also like quiet because they couldn't believe I had I had dunked it. Everybody was shocked. <laughs> I was small. I was smaller than I was when I got to high school. I was probably like I was probably like five seven in eighth grade, uh -huh. like that. Yeah, <laughs> dunking man, cool. yeah. at that size, you know. I know all, 
granddaddy though. That's all pops right there. Also, he had you doing a lot of drills and and and, and plyometric and, type stuff. And you know, if you know my grandfather, you know he a legendary track coach. So like oh. it was mandatory. I don't care if you hate it. I used to cry every day, bro. Like <laughs> I didn't have no regular summers like a kid because every day <laughs> you had to go to track practice at six o'clock. So like when I'm running around the streets at the parks with my homies riding bikes, I had to be home by 5.30 because I had to go to track practice every single day. So, so, you, know, so you ran track too then? All my life. All, all the way till I was old enough to tell them no. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I bet your grandpa was like, man, I want I, I want that track star, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, but it all it all helped out, bro, because I was in like super crazy shape when everybody else was tired. I, I never got tired, like ever, ever got tired. And then right. he used to force me to do the uh pentathlon. So that was like five, you know what that is. It's five events. You know what I'm saying? It's like five events, you get points for each each event. And high jump and long jump was one of the one of the joints, one of the events. So I had always my legs and stuff like that. So it all came together when I decided I want to be a hooper. <laughs> wow. Liv, you ever heard of the pentathlon? No, that's what he kind of me, me. Up, like try it. I heard the triathlon, but not the <laughs> it's, it's three events. The pentathlon is five. It's the same right. thing. I have more events. Yeah. Something wow. new, man. Something new on all balls, Chicago. <laughs> you ain't lying, boy. But 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 Ryan, man, it was since we go in here, man. I, I like to just go with the flow. Uh, you know, we don't have nothing script, man. So uh who did you watch growing up as a shorty uh from Chicago? Of course, anybody from Chicago that you watched and you wanted to say, you know what, I want to pattern my game a little bit after him, and it, it could be whoever. Three people. Okay. Will Bunch, Sharon Collins, Derrick Rose. Wow. That's three a good killers. three. That, that's yeah. a good three right there. What? Like them them three right there is like like legends to me. Like I'm biased to the bone when it comes to them three. Man, that's what's up, man. But yeah. break a little bit down though, Ryan. Break a little bit down to us like yeah, what you see. The thrill. The thrill is a little older. You know what I'm saying? So I seen him, I seen him when I was a shorty shorty, but thrill was just Super excited, like you know, thrilled with that ball, with that pill. He is like a yo yo. He was embarrassing everybody with the crossovers and stuff like that. And then he had to bounce too, as a shorty, like as a mm -hmm. little dude. He was dunking on dudes and stuff like that. So, you know, what I'm saying I had heard about him already from the jump. And then I used to go to the ITT as a shorty and watch him at the at the pro and stuff. And then Sharon came right after him. You know, with the crane, he went right at them. So I was a little older when Sharon and Derek was was coming up. So I understood the game a little more. Mm -hmm. But Sharon was definitely like my man. You know what I'm saying? And then Derek, you know, Derek is Derek. You know what I'm saying? And everybody wanted to be like Derek. Derek was like Michael Jordan coming up. You know what I'm saying? But wow. I knew I wasn't gonna. I knew I wasn't gonna be that tall. You know what I'm saying? So I knew I wasn't gonna get six three, six four. So Sharon and and Will was definitely who I was patterning my game after. But mm. you know, Derek was like, you know, the one though. I ain't gonna lie, he was wow. one. Derek six four. Yeah. He's six three. Six oh, two, okay. Six. Right. But you know what, Brian? We don't like you just being like. I can tell you really like like those guys. You know, yeah. like, we get so many people, you know, that's afraid to you know say, man, I pattern my game after this guy, and he's from yeah. Chicago, and I I enjoy watching him. You know, we don't. We don't get that, and that's why we wanted to start this all ball Chicago so we can hear stories like that. You know, that what you just said, like and Sharon Collins. I I met him many times, and man, great dude, and can flat out play, can flat out hoop. Oh, Ron, yeah. Kill. yeah, but yeah. you also did your thing. You know, yeah. so every time, man, I get an opportunity, especially back in the days, like. When I was done playing, and anytime I see a kid, you know, from the crib, whether they from the suburbs or wherever, I'm gonna watch. You know, so uh, big ups to you, man. From I, I watched a lot of you playing too. But now let's go to the high school. Like high school, did did Kenny Battle go to your high school? He went to West. Oh, so that was your rival. Yeah, that's our rival. He went to West. Yeah, yeah. so but, but I thought he went to your high school. But anyway, we we talk about we ain't talking about Kenny Battle, but. It, <laughs> There must be something out there in that water, though, man, because he has some springs, too. Yeah. 
that's how it's too, yeah. <laughs> you had the bunnies too, man. Yeah, but, but, but when you made that decision, I guess probably you was in that district to go to the Aurora East, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I could have went to both. I could have went to both. You know okay. Whatever one I wanted to go to, I could have went to. Um, you know, I, I grew up on the east side, though. You know what I'm okay. saying? That's, that's where I'm from, born and raised. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I used to go to both games, though. My cousin, my cousin was Jay Tumby. He went to West. You know what I'm saying? So growing up as a shorty, we was we was tight. So he went to West. So I used to go to a lot of their games just to see him play. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And then, but East is where we grew up at. So I was always at the East games regardless. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I came up. My dad went to East. Grandpa went to East. Mama, all my aunts went to East. Nobody went to West. You okay. know what I'm saying? The media family. So when it came down to the decision, like West was the better program, you should say, with Gordy Kirkman. And, you know, they had been to state more recently. And, you know, they was a better program at the time when I was coming up. You know, East was good, but they could never get over the hump of regionals and stuff like that. And East was a, a badder school. It was in a, a badder neighborhood and stuff okay. like that. So you know, when it came down to it, you know, it was it was a no it was a no brainer for me. Like I'm carrying on the family tradition. And this is where I grew up. This is where I was at every Friday night watching games. So this is where I'm going. And then also, you know, I had the uh I had the scholarship. I had got the scholarship in eighth grade to to, to SC. Wow. Sure did. Yeah. I remember that. I had got that I had got that scholarship offer, you know what I'm saying? So I was like blowing up at the time. All the magazines, ESPN, and you know, stuff like that. And Gordy Kirkman told me I wasn't gonna play varsity. So I'm like, what you mean I ain't gonna play varsity? <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, not that not necessarily saying I need to start and, and play big minutes, but you telling me I ain't even gonna be on the team. Like, I'm gonna have jump. a college and I'm gonna play sophomore. Like, that ain't happening, bro. Right. You know you know what I'm saying? East was like, yeah, they gave me the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, here, we're going to let you rock. You know what I'm saying? You're going to play varsity. you starting this and that. So it was a no-brainer. I'm, I'm going, I'm staying home. Right. It all right. worked out. And then you did your thing over there, man. Yeah. And, Throw it up. He went year, over there and broke records. Uh, that's what I was, that's what I was about to say. You know, he, so, so, the court, so the court's got to be named after you over there, too, just like man, when you talk about Morgan Tour. You know, they owe me a lot. They, they owe me a lot. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna sit here in front, you know. And they they owe me a lot, but it's been it's it's like new new staff in there, new new athletic directors, and they the district brought in like people that ain't that's not from the area. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so like they got I got like I got let's like talk about thing. that though, right? Yeah. Let's talk about that though, because that happens to a lot of players, man, like yeah. yourself, who put in that work, uh, don't get the full recognition. And I think it helps the school if they advertise or promote or or talk about a Ryan Boatwright who came from our school and yeah. did a lot of things and won a national championship. And it's, you, you should honor him, you know, do yeah. some things for you yourself. And, and I don't I mean, think that they, happened. Some people did. Like I, I had a um a banner with like my a big picture on it, me dunking and like my accomplishments hanging in the gym. They had me and Ernie Cavisto. I don't know if y'all heard of him, mm-hmm. but. Ernie Cavisto, um, talented white dude with the Kansas. You know what I'm saying? But uh, they had they us in there. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. we don't, we don't know. But they had us in there. Um, and then after a couple of years, when they switched out the staff and brought in all these new people, they took it out and left his up and put oh. mine like the, the the lobby. They put it on the wall in the lobby. But I'm like, bro, I ain't put in work in the lobby. Right. You know I put in work. Right. In the- why would y'all take it out of the gym to put it in the lobby, but leave his hanging up? You know what I'm saying? And then, you know what I'm saying? I like uh, my, my coach had, before he got fired, he had put like a together a shrine in the, in the same lobby, like where all the trophies and, you know, of, of all the accomplishments throughout the school history. They put, he put like a shrine of pitches and stuff like that after we won a championship in there. They didn't take that out. But I just, I, I always felt like, and I ain't been back to the school since then because they ain't give me the respect that I deserve. You know what I'm saying? A lot of players that ain't even accomplished what I had accomplished, never touched the NBA. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that at other schools. Got their jerseys in the gym. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So it's just, it was yeah. crazy to me, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I keep it moving and keep trying to, um, you know what I'm saying, make it. Yeah. It's big, right? But Ryan, that that is sad though, man. Like I'm just I'm gonna speak up. I'm gonna speak about it, man, because 
to me, when you have someone like yourself who believe in, 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 in that school, gave it your all, the least they can do is say, you know what, Ryan, this is a great honor to have you. We're going to name this gym floor after you, or we're going to name this after you. We're going to do this. Uh, and even if they don't, I know, I know I could tell what kind of guy you are and you like, man, I'm gonna keep it moving. But I just think that it just makes the program a little bit better. Now, now the younger generation can say, man, you played there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. went there. yeah. Right. Right. Sure. And a lot of people that only know about the school because of me. Right. You know what I, mean? I did a lot of things for the school. Like, you know, so like I told you, I was clicked tight with, with D Rose and them. like my senior year, I got the school. Sponsored by Adidas, just because I was there. You know wow. I mean? but it's a lot wow. of stuff that's crazy. Like people all around the world only know East Aurora because Ryan Boatwright is the one that was claiming it so hard. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it's crazy, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna keep it moving. Yeah, keep it moving. Ryan, you had a couple <laughs> of sixty point games in school, though, didn't you? Yeah, and I, I had one sixty point game. I had a couple fifties though. <laughs> but you saying I mean, it like it's well, you nothing, get sixty, <laughs> you get sixty and fifty. <laughs> like, yeah, that was, that was, was on a mission, man. I had something to prove, man. Especially, you know, what I'm saying labeling you as a as a suburb kid. You know what I'm saying? You know, the city dudes get mm -hmm. benefit of the doubt just because they playing in the red west or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I had something to prove, bro. You know what I mean? So, I, so I, you, so you had that chip on your shoulder. Absolutely. I mean, I spent a lot of time in the city. That, you know what I'm saying? Like, the West Side claimed me harder than anybody. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't go to school there. So I can't say I played in the Red West or whatever. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I had a chip on my shoulder. You know what I'm saying? You know how the city is. You know how the city is. You know what I'm saying? So I had something to prove. Like, this ain't it. Like, we could hoop out here, too. You know what I'm saying? This is how I get down. <laughs> That's yeah. what's up, man. Right? And, and I'm glad like you spoke that. up. And me, too. I'm glad he spoke on that because... That is true. You know, a lot of city schools mm -hmm. look at the suburban kids and suburban schools like, man, it's going to be an easy win or this and yeah. that. And then when yeah. you start playing against them, you're like, whoa, this yeah. kid is the real deal. Yeah. <laughs> He's the real deal. We got to play a boxing one on him. You know? What? Yeah. Triangle on two. <laughs> I, that's the only thing I used to hate about high school, bro. You get man, you can triple and double all game. Like you can't do that in college. Oh. You can't do that in college. So yeah, that's crazy. called res that's called respect too, though, Ryan. Man, that that means they respect your game and they didn't want you to embarrass and give them one of those sixty pieces. <laughs> yeah. those 60 pieces you know, they, they knew it was coming. So. <laughs> oh, so, so so you did your thing at. At East, uh, at East, and then um, when did you start? I know you mentioned something about getting recruited or getting an uh, offer early on when you were young. But yeah. was it like why did like I didn't see I didn't hear nothing about Illinois University of Illinois, you know DePaul, you know the yeah. local schools. Did they did they even come after you or no? Yeah, they did. Uh, Illinois. I just, I wasn't really a, a, just a, a fan of Illinois. I mean, I watched them growing up with D Brown and D Will and all of them. So I was a fan when they was there, but they just style of play. It just, mm -hmm. it just wasn't, it wasn't for me. You know what I'm saying? I rock with DePaul heavy. You know, Coach Purnell was there when I was coming up. They actually tried to get us to to come in a package deal. They tried to get me, Anthony Davis, and um, Wayne Blackshear to all Ooh. come. Yeah, that would have been ugly. Yeah, and I was willing to do it if, if them two wanted to do it. You know what I'm saying? But I just I wasn't going to DePaul by myself. You know what I'm saying? Right. Being the kid that I was and, you know, coming up in the city, I just felt like I needed to get away mm -hmm. from the city, focus on, on basketball and, and to try to accomplish what I was going to school to accomplish. You know what I'm saying? I felt like if I stayed home, I wasn't going to be able to be as focused as I was. Wow. So you was in that yeah. class. You was in that class with A.D. Yeah. Wow, and AD was a McDonald All American. Yeah, they say and my you, class. And you won, and you won, Mister Basketball. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was a tight. It was a tight race. You know, AD. AD was the number one player in the country. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? But he went to a, a terrible high school. He went to right. Prospect. So like, they record was like three and like twenty eight or something. Like, like he, <laughs> he couldn't win. You know? He's putting up the numbers, but he couldn't win. He went to a horrible high school. 
So, like, you can't give him Mr. Basketball. And then me and Wayne was, we was tip a tat because he was at Morgan Park. The crazy mm-hmm. part is the night I had 66, when we played at 8. Wayne then played at 530. Wayne had 56. And word got back to me right before I took the court. Like, because it was, like, right at the end, like, going into March where Mr. Basketball was going to come up. So, you know, my, my dad and my cousin then came up to me like, hey, Shorty just had 50, Joe, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we and we was playing Proviso West. So he was, they, you know what I'm saying? They like, look, this is the statement game right here. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to win this, you got to go out here and, and get 50 plus. Right. So we went out there and the crazy part is, man, we played Proviso West, man. And, and uh, they came, it was at my school and they came in there, man. And they went up like 10-0, 13-0, right? Out the gate. You know how the city is. They talking crazy. <laughs> I'm talking about crazy, bro. I'm talking about so disrespectful. At your gym. At my gym. Man, I snapped. I ran off like 25 straight. Like, Damn. I'm straight. And it, I was so efficient. I was 20 for 26 that night. Whoa. Damn. It's six, it's six shots that night. It was crazy. I don't know. Something got in me, man. I just couldn't miss, man. The rim was so big that night. It was crazy. You whacked out. And what you go for? Back out. Mamba. Mamba style. <laughs> Was doing all types of stuff. Crazy. And you had 66? 66. Wow. That got to be a high school Illinois record right there. It is. It is. It yeah. Is. <laughs> it got to be. I mean, man, 66. we got record. We got record breakers <laughs> coming on here, man, on all ball Chicago, man. Yes, sir. Uh, Wayne pushed me to the limit that night for sure. He, he, <laughs> made, he made me get my back. Sure. <laughs> so, but that speak about this a little bit, man. Like, I, you were. Mr. Basketball, but you wasn't on the McDonald All-American team, you know. So let's talk about, because that seems to me some political types, things that was going on, man, with that situation. Because if you miss the basketball, no, I'm not saying you should be a shoe in, but if you're doing your thing, like you, you said, putting up numbers, you know, and was doing your thing, it seems like to me that was some, some politics going on. It was all politics, man. It was all politics. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew it was politics, from the shoe game to the schools, from the city and the suburbs. It was it was, it was politics all across the board. Wow, that's sad, man. Because I thought you know that you should have that opportunity to be you know playing on the big stage at the United Center. Oh, it hurt. All that did hurt. I was salty. Oh, did you sad. did you get the nomination though? Did yeah, you? I got least get- yeah, I got a nomination. I just ain't make the cut. You, know you, you, you ain't want that nomination. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I could have kept that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't like that. I, don't I don't blame you. I don't blame you, man. That's, a, that's just a piece of paper, man. Oh, my man. man. I'm trying to play the game. What is it, my <laughs> city school? I'm I'm the was at the United Center that year, man. Hey, <laughs> and, and, and it seems to me that you have that type of game, though, Ryan, that you like to put on a show, even though – you probably not going in there with that mindset, but your game was so quick. And yeah. and I think you knew how to pick and choose your speed, too. A lot of people just go fast, fast, fast. Sometimes you'll walk it up, and then you you, you you make that move real quick. <laughs> Who taught you that, man? Like, Or did you watch certain players say, man, you know what? I see what he's doing. Just being a student of the game, man, you know, just understanding that, you know, as you get older, you know what I'm saying? And I, you know, I, I ain't go to school thinking I was going to do four years. You know what I'm saying? I went there like I'm gonna be a six, seven months, go get some paper, take care of my family. You know what I'm saying? Like this is what it is. But you know, just being a student of the game, bro. I used to, like I said, my favorite player growing up, Allen Iverson. Okay. And, uh, I feel like everybody that's a guard probably is like that. You know what I'm saying? So I used to literally study him, like study him, study him, break everything down. When YouTube first came around, I was on. You know, so I was getting in trouble all the time, like computer class and all that. I was, I'm supposed to be doing assignments. I'm on YouTube watching. <laughs> it ain't happening, but yeah. <laughs> I understood how he used to, you know what I'm saying? He used to get people to baby cross into the into the big aisle and just right. like, the change of pace, man. And then, like I said, watching Will and Sharon play like that, you know what I'm saying? I just, it came natural from being around it. Wow. And then, and then what made you say, you know what, I'm going to be a Husky. I'm going to commit 
I'm gonna commit to Mr. Calhoun. I'm, I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna let him do it. You know, come in and show me some things. And, and, and I'm leaving Chicago. He didn't play for Calhoun though, did he? Did yeah, you? Yeah, oh yeah, my first year. Okay. He 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 retired, man, randomly. Nobody knew it was gonna happen. He retired going into my sophomore year. So summertime was up there doing summer school, and um, it just it hit the news. We just everybody got alerts to their phone. It's all over West, and we all like, damn, coach just quit. <laughs> What's going on? But we wasn't tripping though, cause Ko was the assistant coach, the head assistant, and you know everybody had good rapport with him, and he came up under Coach Cal, so we knew it was, you know, we was in good hands. So we was yeah. Straight. yeah. And then you, what, which year you won the, the national championship? Was that your, junior, your junior year? Fourteen. Yeah, fourteen. Y'all beat wow. that. Y'all beat Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky in the finals and. uh uh, Florida in the first game of the Final Four. That was man, that was dope, man. Yeah, unbelievable. That's I'm unbelievable on this experience. Well, Ryan, you know, you know, we gotta ask, man. You yeah. won the national championship, mm -hmm. and you came back that next year. Yeah, that was tough. Ooh, that, I know. I'm, I, you know what I'm about. But to you ask. was Big East Player of the Year the next year, though, right? AAC, we you know we we switched the conferences that my sophomore year or going into my junior year. Okay. You know, at the big stuff going on with the football program and stuff. So our football program wasn't as good as Louisville. So we was trying to get into the ACC because they had broke the big east up. Okay. Oh. You know, football stuff, you know, they bring in all the money. So uh we couldn't get so, in. They they so, let Louisville get in instead of us. But so back we, to what I wanted to ask you, man. Like yeah. you were hot. I mean, y'all won the national championship. It was tough. I think you should have left, man, right after that. Me what too. you think? Yeah, yeah, I think you should have left. If I could go back and do it, honestly, I'd have left my freshman year. You know, <laughs> my man. I, I, could do it. You know, I don't know if y'all had new, but I had got in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Oh, see, had, we didn't know nothing about that. Yeah, I got in trouble with the NCAA. You know, I, I, missed, I missed three and a half months of the season. And it was oh, wow. crazy. It had never happened like this with me. So I got in trouble for, you know, they this basically the NCAA didn't believe how close me and Reggie Rose was. So how me and Derek and, and Reggie and them was. Okay. You know and back then, well, not back then, the next year they changed the rule because of me. But at that time, AAU coaches couldn't pay for your parents to go on your visits. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we got I got in trouble for Reggie paying for my mom to go to all my visits. So I got in trouble for some plane, some plane tickets, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and um, basically what it was, got in trouble. They did an investigation. So I missed like the first like two and a half, three months. Then they cleared me. When I come back, they clear me. I get cleared. I'm going crazy. I'm averaging like 15, 16 as a true freshman. They got me going for, uh, 13 at Boston on the mocks. So, wow. you know, I'm all my family going crazy. Like, and I'm doing this for like a two month span. So like they we, we think we gone. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Keep this up. I, I, I just keep averaging ten. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. gone. And right. they hit me again, man, for the same thing, for the exact same thing. It never happened before in NCAA history. Oh. We fly to Notre Dame. We play in Notre Dame. When I say the entire city of Chicago is in Indiana, bro, I'm talking about like it's my first game home, like close to home. You know right. what I'm saying? Everybody is there, bro. I'm talking about it's full. And the night before the game, we had a team dinner. Coach got home, pulled me in the hallway like, man, they done did it again. They done reopened the investigation that they already gave you the time for. Wow. Crazy, bro. And I couldn't play. I had to sit down, bro. I had to sit wow. Down. And all your family there. Everybody there. My family, friends, just fans from the, from the city, just that's fans of mine, like took the drive. Crazy, bro. Crazy. Right before the game. Right the night before the game. Night wow. before the game. Yep. Wow. And then, um, you know, I had to sit out another like two weeks. And by the time I by the time I came back, we was in the middle of Big East play. And this was like the real Big East. Like, you know, y'all know how the real Big East was. <laughs> when the Big East was real. It, it was real, real. <laughs> I came back and it threw me off. I couldn't get my rhythm back. You know what I'm saying? And um I ended up falling from the lottery to like early second round, you know, mid second round. Wow. And then, you know, doing that, they was like, man, just go back to school. Like, you know what I mean? One more year, 
and you're gonna do it as long as you do what you did last year, you gone. You might be able to go lot of Right. Went back average 16 and we got in trouble again. Not me, but <laughs> school. The Hell. school got in trouble for the APR scores from the teams from 09 and all you know, you kinda got all them pro. Yeah, them right. on the school six months and bouncing, not finishing school. So it caught up with us. We banned from postseason play. We couldn't go to the tournament. 21 and 9 going into the tournament, we couldn't go. So Damn. that hurt. So that hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Not being able to play in the tournament. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, a lot of guys get drafted from the tournament. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So that hurt me, man. Forced to go back to school junior. Now players transfer. It was only like five of us that stayed because we was banned. You know what I'm saying? That told me and Baz up. We that turned us up to the fullest. We was working so hard that something we go in during year, we win it, win it all. That's real. That's when I should have bounced. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree, man. I agree. Yeah, that's when I should have bounced. I so agree, my, man. The agent I was gonna go with, uh Mark Barterstein, a priority. Okay. He came to the crib and he was like, Look, you can go, you hot as ever. You know what I'm saying? He like, you can go. You probably gonna go, you know, because you older. Long as you stay in school at our size, the worse it is. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You gotta bounce early at our age if you got any chance to, or you gotta win like play of the year, AP play of the year, something like that. They, the older you get, they tag you. You know what I'm saying? Right. So he like, you hot, you probably gonna go second round. But he like, he tell me this. He like, look, you go to school, you go back to school for your senior year. Shabazz is gone. It's your team. He like, you go back and do what I know you're going to do. I don't care if I got to call in a favor. I'm going to get you drafted first round. So I'm like, and it's Mark Barterstein. You know what I'm saying? Like, he he's certified. He's a big-time agent. I'm like, man, what I want to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to go back to school, man. So, but he like, man, you promised me you're going to get me first round. Right. All right, man, forget it. I'm going to just go ahead, finish. You know, I told my mama that I was going to finish school anyway. I'm finna go murder this stuff. You know, so I'm gonna try to go back to back on some Florida stuff. We had just right. had Robert Purvis, um transfer in. He was a McDonald's All American. So I'm like, all right, bet. Long story short, my partner DeAndre Daniels, he ended up changing his mind right before we went back to school. He wanted to go pro. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? That was a big reason I was gonna go back to school because if he would have came back, I, I had no no doubt in my mind we could have went back to back. He's a bad boy too. He was a bad boy. Yeah, he was. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah, man, but at this time, I'm already back at school. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to just make the best out of it. I'm going to try to go and play of the year or something. Long story short, man, I ended up averaging 19 that year. But we we just couldn't – we had our ups and downs. You know how the season is. Mm-hmm. We had a young team. We didn't end up winning enough games. We fell one game short of making the tournament. And, you know, that's why I ain't get drafted right there. Senior wow. guard, senior guard, six feet, you know, you know how it goes. Got these young boys coming in as freshmen, they potential and all of that. But I had a deal with Brooklyn before the draft was even over, so I was blessed to have that. You know what I'm saying? And it was probably it was a better deal than if I had got drafted the second round. But right. It That's all good. worked. Out. Yeah, it all worked. Yeah, out. it's 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 hard, man. That was a tough decision right there. You can, I can hear it. In your voice that that was a tough decision to make and, to go back. And um, I could do it out of balance for sure. Right, but you'd have bounced your freshman year though, right? Yeah, I'd have because I would, I, I'd have ended up where I'm at anyway. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I'd have ended up overseas regardless. You know what I'm right. saying? Got fit any injuries? You know what I'm saying? I, I could go overseas. I could have played overseas at that age, easy. You know what I'm saying? So if I could do it over again, yeah. But I was just trying to make the best decisions in those times and listen to the people around me. Hey, Ryan, you can still get back in the league though, still, right? Man, I can, but man, the NBA, man, when you talk about politics, bro, if Marcus, no, them <laughs> politics is sick. It's sick, bro. So, you know, it, it's it's always an opportunity. I'm still young, still who, you know what I'm saying? My name still ring bells, but, you know, it's all about right place, right time, and opportunity. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's, 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 it's facts right there, man. I, I was literally out of the league at 24. Yeah, man. 24 years old, man. So, right. yeah, it, 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 it's that's that's them politics, man. It's no joke. Uh, but Ryan, you had a you, you know you did your thing, man. 
you 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 made some money. Uh, yeah. You know, you made some money doing your thing, and um, and I always say, and I'm talk about the agent, you know, sports agent, because uh, I had some uh, some uh, agent give me some not so good advice, you know, on contracts, you know, when I was playing in the NBA, and and I took a one year deal when I should have took the you know the eight year deal. So you know, and I'm like, you my agent, so you the one supposed to be giving me that legal advice, you know, right. and. It kind of just backfired on me because I took the one-year deal. The team got upset, and they traded me. <laughs> so they traded me to a team that already had, you know, Sean Elliott, who was, you know, a small forward. I played the same position, so I wasn't going to get no minutes. And then after the season, they didn't resign me. So now I'm a free agent. Now I'm trying to find another team, and all these teams already drafted who they wanted. You know, so now I'm behind the ball again, eight ball. So I get it, man, and, it, and it's tough, man. So – Yes. Now, now you got to look at it like I still love the game, you know. But then I start looking at the paper. I'm like, I got to just go get them. I got to go get the bag, you know. So That's wherever I got to go, it's just like you know, what I'm saying like me, where you know you, your people depending on you. You know what right. I'm saying? You know, you got to go get some chicken. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I came from a a family where you know mom and dad was together and they both working and you know all good glitz and glory. I could have stuck it out in the D League like Quinn Cook, you know what I'm saying, and just kept playing. You was gonna get your shot eventually, as long as you you balling. But you know the D League, they made twenty five thousand after tax. You know right. That? But but the I'm new playing. league, they paying them two fifty though, right, Ryan? Now, that's the like new young boys. Players. That's, that's like certain players. players. Yeah. He can get like two exceptions, for, and you got to be coming out of high school. Oh. Uh, so it's, it's it's like like if Zion ain't want to go to Duke. He would have been one of them dudes that got two fifty. Exactly. I'm saying. Oh. So yeah, but everybody else, you, you know. And it's a doggy dog world down there, man. Like man, people what? grinding, you know. Like, <laughs> grinding. I ain't, ain't nothing like the D League, man. Hey, the G League is like modern day slavery, bro. I'm telling you, bro, <laughs> it is crazy, bro. I was in the D League. What? I I I turned down some money what two years ago. Okay. To to try to get back in the league. Right. So I'm like, man, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen now. You know what I'm saying? I got a little money put up. All right, let me go try to do this. The crazy part is, bro, it's like teams, not everybody had a G League team. So, like, where I was, I was in Dallas, right? So you got the Dallas team. Then you got, they take players from like Portland because they don't got no G League team. And then they take players from New Orleans because they don't got a G League team. So you got you and the players that's on your team on that roster. Then you got the two-way players now, and you got the players that's like last two guys on the bench on a big team. When they get sent down, because they got to play, you know what I'm saying? They don't want them to ride the bench, so they send them down to the G League for two, three weeks. They start, play the whole game, take all the shots. Dang. And I don't care who you is, you know what I'm saying? Dang. So you buried on the bench till they leave, you know what I'm saying? So it's, man, it's crazy, man. <laughs> You only make twenty five thousand, thirty thousand, right? I had to pay fifty thousand to get out of that contract to go overseas. You had yeah. to pay to get out of that contract. Fifty grand. Y'all only paying me thirty. You said <laughs> I gotta pay you fifty to leave. Wow. Damn, I wow. didn't know they, they made you pay. Yeah, it's crazy. That G League is sick. <laughs> but that, but overseas take good care of you. You a high level athlete though. They take good yeah. care. Of you. Depending on where you at, for sure. Mm-hmm. You got both your of y'all, both of y'all freeze up on. No, I'm right. still alive. Yeah, I'm cool. All right. Yeah. So what did you say, Bob? No, I was just saying how those overseas teams, some of them, man, they make some really good money, 600000 yeah. 800000 man. You yeah, know. yeah. Them Euro League teams, man, they, they they take care of you for sure. Even like Euro Cup and stuff like that, you get four, five hundred. Like you know Germany too, right? Germany don't pay that much. But see, the thing with overseas is, they they different. They no, they just different. It ain't like America. Like the NBA, I don't care what happened. Your money guarantee, you gonna get paid first. Hey, I spoke time. about that before, man. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Overseas though, nah, it, you it's gonna be late. You know yep. what I'm saying. You end up getting it. You know what I'm saying because you can sue them and it's contracts and all, so they gonna have to pay you. But you are gonna be waiting on that bread though. For yeah. sure. They gonna expect you to show up like ain't nothing happened. Good attitude and all that. Like bro, I ain't over here. <laughs> you know, from the family to be hooping for free, man. You two months late, man. I need my exactly. chicken. Exactly. Happy, I need my chicken. 
I heard somebody say overseas they want you to be tall as LeBron, shoot good as <laughs> Steph Curry, and all of that, all for two hundred dollars a month. <laughs> man, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. So every situation different. You know, every yep. country is different countries. It's different, man. Some sponsors got more money than other sponsors. You know, it's just find your find the right spot, try to stick. That's all I can say with this overseas stuff. You find a team that got the budget and they pay on time and you like the style, try to stay there as long as you can. Right. Ryan, you've been winning over there though, right? You've been doing pretty yeah. good though. You won a couple of championships and MVPs, right? I have been my this is gonna be my sixth year pro this year. I had I had some good years. I won I won I won a championship and uh in, in Croatia. Um I played in Euro Cup. Uh, we went to the Elite Eight, uh, two of my teams, uh one team in Spain, one team in Turkey. So I had some good years, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie, I made some some great money. Um, mm. I ain't played Euro League yet though. Like that's what I'm trying to like Euro League, like the best league right behind the NBA. Like they charter jets and these dudes get millions of dollars and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get there, but it's also like the NBA. You know what I'm saying? Politics. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, and then What's the guys, to China. I'm trying to go there right now as we speak. I'm trying to go back. <laughs> Cause I'm I know they take care of American athletes like you, right? Ain't nothing like China. They giving you that bread. bread. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got it. You. Well, you saw what they did to Steph, huh? I mean, Steph, they, treat, they, yeah. they treat Steph, Steph like a, like like God over there. Steph is God over there. You Steph see? Steph Palmer, where he is? He is God over there. We do whatever you. He don't even. He live in China. He don't even. He don't even live here no more. Right. You know he him? Lives. Have you? Yeah. You got the chance to know? Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Met him a couple times. I played in China twice. My first. I'm, my my second year pro, I got a deal in China, and then my fourth year, I got bought out by China from my Turkey team for the playoffs, and and went over there and played for the playoffs. So, yeah, I you messed up a couple times. Yeah, he's good people. So he you said you still you still trying to get over there? Then I've okay. been turning down uh, deals in Europe all uh, summer because I'm, I'm trying to go back to China, man. Because you know with this COVID stuff, bro. But one year of trying to take advantage of that. So they lowballing everybody. You know what right. I'm saying? Then, you know, if it kicked back up, depending on what country you're in, you might not get that bread. You might right. be waiting two years to get that bread because they using COVID is, you know what I'm saying? Did your oh. uh, did crazy. your agent, Brian, did your agent like because I know teams, NBA teams <laughs> are looking for, for cats yeah. to play, you know, in that bubble. You know, because a lot of people didn't play in that ball. Mm-hmm. Did you get a call or no? No, I ain't get no call. But, you know, you got to understand, man, like, the NBA, man, like, a player like me, so, like, Trey Burke, right? Say Trey Burke, for example. Yeah. Trey Burke wasn't in the league before the bubble. You know what I'm saying? But he had asked a lot of repick. You know what I'm saying? Had a stint with Washington two years ago. So when, it, when them positions come available, them dudes going to get the first – the first call, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Dudes like him, because he wasn't in the league. You know what I'm saying? So you gonna get they gonna get that call before overseas dudes gonna get that call. You know what I'm right. saying? But but Ryan, I think you need somebody that this is how I always thought. Like I need somebody that got a mouthpiece, you know, somebody mm-hmm. that's gonna represent me, be talking to these people while I'm out here doing my thing. Like you 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 putting up numbers, you're doing your thing, and it got to be somebody that has that mouthpiece to say, you know what, man, you gotta take a chance with my man. Got to take Absolutely. a chance. Absolutely. Agent plays a huge part in players' career, especially if you ain't no lottery or top 10 guy. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? I just signed with a new agency, actually. Um, a guy that I had knew for years now. I'm with Life Sports. Um, okay. Ty, he represent uh, Pascal Siakam and um, you know Norman Powell. A couple dudes in the league that they like five, six years old now, so they knew. You know what I'm saying? The bigger, the bigger companies – you know, so I don't have my priority, and and I was with Octagon uh, previous to also. That's who Steph Curry and them with. Okay. You know, you know, when you overseas, and you know, I ain't got nothing bad to say about them, but they got a lot of clients. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You know, you might not be top priority. You know what I'm saying? So they get to you when they get to you when you with them bigger firms. You know what I'm saying? So I feel. So bad. Ryan, so Ryan, do you think that's fair though, man? Like. 
you guys telling me all this stuff when you, you come in to see me play in college, and then when I get there, I'm like second fiddle. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not your guy. Because if I would have stuck with Brooklyn, I would have no problems with it. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> right. It would have been, you would have been top priority. You right. Know what I'm but once you get overseas or you get to China, not even necessarily China, because China, you getting paid so much money, they commission check is, is, is good. So nice. they're going right. to be answering. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be trying to be, you know what I'm saying, cordial with you. It's just when you get overseas and, you know what I'm saying? The bagging is big as some of these other dudes. They going they gonna be taking care of them first because they piece of they the piece of the pie for them is bigger. You know what I'm saying? Which is understandable. Yeah. But it ain't fair. But it's it's, it's a, a business. business. Yeah, it's it's business. a business. You gotta understand that. You know what I'm saying? But you know what though, as a as an agent myself, like with, with real estate and all that stuff, I, I can't understand that. You know, you have to give everybody the same priority attention. You know, yeah. I understand what you're saying because I make more money over here, but you still have a career. So yeah. it's not fair because I got LeBron James and I got Ryan Bo right over here that I get him all the priority. Yeah. I mean, that's just my take on it, man. No, so we can't is. let these agents off the hook because of that, Ryan. You can't. That's how it's supposed to be. And that's why I respect a lot of, like, the new agent that I got. Like, he don't take everybody. You know what I'm saying? He take enough where he could, you know what I'm saying, prioritize his time. You know, so mm-hmm. these other companies, they're going to take as many clients as they can. You know what I'm saying? Try to right. get them with whatever job or the biggest job that they can get and then take their piece from a hundred dudes. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Having you a core team of 20, 30 dudes where you could prioritize and, and really be involved. You know what I'm saying? So as a player coming out, you got to know that. You know what I'm saying? You just can't run with the, the big names. You know what I'm saying? Even yeah. if they trying to get you, you got to understand if this don't work out, you gonna fall to the to the bottom of the list. <laughs> yeah, that is sad, but it is a business. That's that's you know, it, it is a business, man. Agencies, they looking for that next person, that next GOAT, that next LeBron, that next Michael, you know, and they, you know, some, like you said, Ryan, some are out there trying to get, you know, as many as they can. And then some is like, you know what, I'm gonna get two every year. I'm just gonna get two every year. I'm gonna work with these guys and I'm gonna try to get them the best deals that I can possibly get them and there's some out there just like man trying to get as many as i can some agents genuinely want to help the players and some agents in it for the for the paper i can see ryan making it back to the league though right now live with the way that the game is going right now because it's a guards league pray for it every night i tell you that it's gonna happen for you man i can i believe that man because ryan how, how old are you 27 27 yeah you still young man yeah, yeah, you're still young, so uh, maybe. And the Lakers yeah. damn sure need you. I mean, they got size, but they they have no outside shooting. I, I always say this: man. you need you need two type of different point guards. You need that that small, quick, or you need a big. You know, they can do some things. So if you can, you know, get two for the price of one. I mean, why not? Do right, it, you know? right. You know, they got like my man Quinn Cook over there. You know what I'm saying, but. Yeah, Queen <laughs> Cook is in L.A. He, he stuck yeah. it all out, didn't he, Mike? Yeah, he did his thing. <laughs> That's why I respect Quinn, though. You know, he come from a little better background, so he was able to stick it out, man. But, you know what I'm saying? I, he can't do that. He paid his dues, though. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, Queen, I, Queen I, Cook I mean, came from North Carolina? A dude. He went to he dude. Went to dude. dude, right. Yeah, but he ain't get drafted neither. We the same class. He ain't get drafted. He, he paid his dues. He, he did the D-League for like four years before he got a shot. So, right. Man. So he paid his dues. He, he he earned that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? he did. Yeah, he did. Now I see Trey Burke worked his way back up in there because he was out of there. Yeah, but you Trey, you know, he a lottery pick, man. He was a fourth. Yeah, pick. he was a lottery pick. Yeah, right. Know, them, them, them benefits is different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, he was a lottery pick, and he doing <laughs> his thing. I mean, he doing his thing. He might get a he might get a contract now, a big one. Yeah, he cold, cold, like super cold, like for real. Tim Hardaway came over here and said that, though. Remember he said that? He said, if they let that boy go, he play like out of the house. Yeah, no, he cold, bro. Me and Trey, that's my He, yeah. We the same class, too. He cold. Ryan, you say he yeah, cold, we, cold? He cold. Real. We are I love about- guys that give it up to other guys, Liz. Straight up, man. He cold, hey, man. Like man. I said, hey. opportunity and, and, and system. You know what I'm saying? Utah, it wasn't his fit. You know nope. what I'm saying? 
we don't we don't know what's going a lot of people don't be knowing what's going on behind the scenes you know what i'm saying they just see you out there and you ain't being who we used to seeing you be but mm-hmm. you don't know you got to deal with this coach and this coach don't want you to do this or you know what i'm saying he wants you to get this dude involved or we run the offense through this dude you know what i'm saying right. people don't stand in that they just be like you out there playing you ain't doing you ain't doing nothing right you know then that ain't the case you get right. with another team that's gonna let you go now look at him. Right. He out there giving Kawhi the claw half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he gets problems, ain't he? Hey, Kawhi yeah. too tall to be trying to guard him, man. He ain't gonna yeah. stay with that. That's a that's like if Kawhi couldn't stay with you. I mean, they, they call him a lockdown defender, but he's six eight. You yeah, five, man. six and lap, six one. Man, please. And and, and and man, reason why I, I think that bubble, like I'm talking about this bubble now, right? It's like pickup game. So if you used to playing pickup ball, you are gonna ball out in that bubble, you know, because you ain't got no fans there. So you like, man, it's just pickup ball. We, I ain't trying to get off the court. So let's let's right. do it. Yeah. So it's I different. think it's like you know, it's busy like that. Ain't no fans. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the backdrop different. You know what I'm right. saying? In in a regular gym, you ain't in no big arena. You know what I'm right. saying? It's different. That's why dudes yeah. hit the top, they will never hit. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they said, dudes out there who who never got any time showing up like all stars. <laughs> <up. laughs> Crazy. <laughs> who you got winning it, Brian? Yeah, I'm a Laker. I'm I'm, I'm riding with Bron, man. Okay, oh, Bron, I got to bet with you there because he, yeah. he know <laughs> Bron AD gonna get it done. You know what I'm saying? You know AD from the crib, so right. Um, That's right. right. Yeah. Any shouts out, Bob, on your end, man? So man, my out. phone died, man, before I came home, and I wasn't able to charge it up. I usually, but I'm gonna shut this thing out, man. As soon as uh, we get so off. you got, so you over there with a cricket? You can't kick yeah. it with a cricket. <laughs> my man got the cricket. <laughs> hey man, I got the chirp, man. The next <laughs> tail, man. But oh, Ryan, your boy Lib plug, man. So I know as soon as he get off here, he don't want to tell you, but he gonna be sending your information now. He's gonna be talking to people yeah. about you. He gonna hey, do it. That's the way I'll he get out, it. man. As soon as we get off, he gonna be like, man, man, let me reach out to some people for Ryan, man. I like him. Hey, yeah. Lib, I just stool pitching on you, man. My bad. <laughs> so I can't I can't do nothing for Ryan because Ryan already got an agent. <laughs> oh yeah, I do. Yeah, I just, Ryan got an agent. Every agent to come out to me, man, talking about you, you soliciting my player. <laughs> but, but definitely, man, I'm. I mean, it's people that's in the league, you know, that should be, you know, hollering. Man. I mean, you got, you got David Booth now doing his thing uh, on on that NBA level. Uh, I mean, I can make some calls and be like, man, check my man out. Yeah. But they already know about Ryan. They know me. I had, yeah. I had a. With D Booth, he was in New Orleans when I when I did summer league with them. You know what I'm saying? But politics came into that play too. You know what I'm saying? Like, was at training camp getting busy cooking everybody. They telling my age I'm the best player here and all of this. Then we go to summer league, and um, uh, Larry Drew's son is on the team. They let him play all the minutes, man. I'm, I'm killing this dude for a week straight. Wow. And he where is he? Where, and where is he now? Who knows? <laughs> Right, he, he's not in the league. I don't think he's in the league no more. I ain't trying to disrespect nobody. Now he ain't no league dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, Man, he, facts is facts, though. I mean, you yeah. know, like, like I'm gonna keep it. I keep it 100 with people too, yeah. man. Like, sometimes it, that's the politics. My dad is the coach. Oh yeah. You know what? And and, and sometimes it's good. Coach with Cleveland, the dad was yeah. the coach of Cleveland. They just won a chip, and he courtside. Right. His daddy wow. courtside. You know what I'm saying? At summer league, he, he played. The whole game, every game. Wow. Man, Why Ryan, I, I pray, man. I'm praying that you get that shot, though, bro, because I think yeah. you deserve that shot, man, to, to be in there and do your thing and let your family come and see you play. You get your jersey, man, and hang it up after you finish playing in the league, man, and just give that advice to the next shorty, man, because – there's somebody watching Ryan right now as we talking on the on this uh podcast that we do all ball Chicago. It's somebody listening and saying, Man, Ryan didn't get that opportunity, but he hung in there and then he finally got it. And now I see that you gotta go through some things to get what you want. You know. Gonna have, have some adversity for show, man. Definitely. Hey, you got your boy Nick Anderson over there in Orlando, get you a workout over there, boy. I'm telling you, you need to come holler at me, man. Yeah, man, man get your workout over there. They need some guards bad over they, there in Atlanta, man. Don't, 
Yeah, they see, do. see, sometimes, man, we just need to put your face back out there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And you know, let's, let's not forget. Say you got a sight out of mind sometimes. Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. And you was a stone party. cold killer, man. And you figure you 27, man. Right now, you going there and help help one of these teams, man. I'm in my prime right now, man. Yeah, yeah you, you in are. your prime. Yeah, Unguardable. Yeah. And then the cigars yeah. league, man. We putting it out there, man. We calling it in, man. Y'all come get my man Ryan, man. Yeah, real. the NBA, the uh, NBA, y'all need to come and get Ryan Boatwright, man. I'm telling you, get him, come and get him right up, now. Man. Let me get a shot. Yeah, yes, sir, man. man. So, but Ryan, before we get up out of here, man, we always like, you know, our, our guests to drop some knowledge into some up and coming shorties, you know, uh, that want to play the game. Yeah. So let's you know, spit some spit some lyrics out to him, man. Uh, man, just. Like I, like we just talked about, you gonna face some adversity, you know what I'm saying? In, the, in this, in this business, you know, basketball is a business. Y'all gotta understand that right now. Early, you know, if I could have understood that early, I think my my path would have been a little different. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was used to, you know, my talent. You know what I'm saying? Getting me over the hump. You know what I mean? But you gotta understand that you gotta play the game, and it's a business. And you know what I'm saying? Carry yourself the right way. You know what I mean? And um, you know uh. You know, always just stand tall, man. Keep working hard. You know, there's going to be times you're going to get knocked down. You know what I'm saying? You're going to want to give up. Well, people, politics going to make you feel like I can't, you know what I'm saying? I, when I'm playing this game for, like, it ain't fun no more. But you just got to stand tall, man. Stick it out. Keep working hard. And it's going to all, it's going to all come, come around, man. And, um, you know what I'm My saying? Man. My I'm man. Stick to it. You know what I'm saying? You can get some money elsewhere. There's money everywhere. You know what I'm saying? In this world playing this game, man. Take care of your family, man. Yes, That's sir. what's up, Ryan. Man, I appreciate that too, Ryan. That's, That's what's up, man. One of, of my favorite guys from UConn, baby. Khalil yeah. me was my man, but Ryan, you came and kind of put my it out of me. That's my OG. Khalil, my man. Khalil out of me, the fat guy. Boy, that boy was Khalid, tough, man. wasn't he? He's definitely fat, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't it's call him, though. Bro, that was tough. <laughs> that was UConn, my man. But, you, but UConn had some. That's every year, man. You kind of yeah. killers, you know. So we got some. We got guys. We got like fifty pros. Yep, yep. So fifty man, pros. Yeah, they got like a wall at UConn in the in the um in the gym of like everybody that came to UConn that that played in the NBA, no matter how short it was or how long it was. And it's like fifty dudes that 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 got NBA contracts. Yeah, it's like, wow, that's cool. Dang. That's cool. Yeah. And you you keep in touch with Ko. Yeah, we talk, follow each other on IG, you know what I'm saying? We okay. talk, you know what I'm saying? It ain't like big, long, you know what I'm saying, conversations. But, yeah, we, we rap every now and then for sure. All right, because he got a bad – to me, he got a bad rap too, man. Yeah, he KO good people, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, he got the bad end of the stick, man. He ain't do nothing no different than any other of these types. Exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's what happened, Liv? Like, what you mean the bad one on some recruiting stuff they got? Yeah, yeah. man, yeah. yeah. Yeah, recruiting stuff. You I got mean, to I would did it. I mean, if I had somebody that played made it to the NBA, man, man, show up at the gym, man. I'm I'm trying to get this top recruit. What's yeah. wrong with that? You know, <laughs> Coach K doing it for show. You know, <laughs> Duke doing it in Kentucky, man. Coach Calipari got Drake at the at practices, man. <laughs> oh, Drake the rapper. Yeah, man. Drake oh yeah. Man. Oh man, yeah. Get, he doing a midnight madness, all type of stuff, man. Right, they had Snoop Dogg up in there. That was Kansas. Kansas. That was Kansas. Kansas. Yeah. Right. Man, come but on. but like you said, they do that because it makes you hip. It makes you cool. So and if the coach is cool with these rappers, man, I'm going to KU. I'm going here. I'm oh. going there. So, hey, they, was, they were trying but to But that's not an NCAA violation, you know. Come on. NCAA is that's a yeah, man. But but we 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 could we could talk all day, man. All I know day. I know you got something to do, man. But we gonna we want you to come back on too, man, soon. So <laughs> but when you make that NBA, yeah, when you in the NBA, man, come back on. He going this year, man. I'm predicting that after the bubble, Ryan gonna get a job because the rest of them dudes flaked out and didn't want to come to the bubble. So they gotta <laughs> go get somebody for real. You feel me? For sure, for sure, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Man. Well, good luck, Ryan, man. God bless you and your family, man. Continue success, big guy. Yeah, God bless y'all too, man. I That's right. It. Love you, bro. Be safe. Love you, man. All right. Peace, Ryan.
Later. UConn's finest, baby. Ryan so, Boat, right? Let's so, go. Oh, man, I enjoyed the hell out of that interview. And I forgot no. to say that we had, uh, uh, Morgan what's her Tuck. name? Morgan Tuck on here. Yeah, I know, but, you know, Ryan was, Ryan was keeping it real. I mean, I mean did, real as ever, man. Right. And, and sometimes people don't want to keep it real. You know, he's talking about the situation with Derrick Rose and Reggie Rose and how they people looked at him different and this and that. Right. Uh, because he hung out with those guys. And then he goes to college. And then the situation where Reggie was taking care of, and, you know, and making sure that he his mom was able to go to some of those visits. Maybe it was unofficial visits that he wanted to see college campuses. I don't understand that part. And I should have got a little bit more in details with that because I thought universities were supposed to fly your family out uh, right. when they were recruiting you. So, But still, Ryan, good kid. Great I mean, kid. I can't call him. I can't call him. Well, he's a grown he's man, not nah, right. Yeah. But a good, a good young man who's doing the right thing, man. Trying to his best to get back. You no, know, and he showed love to some of the Chicago Hoopers, legends, point guards. Sharon Sharon Collins. You know, uh, so Will Bynum. I mean, that's love, man. D Rose he shows you what who he was looking up to and wanted to pattern him get his game out there. And, such a humble young man, though. It's a good dude, man. God, good dude. Hey, God bless him, man. And I, I got 100% confident that he's going to get another shot at it. Because I'm looking at the way that the league is going, Liv. And they love the small guards, man. Especially what Trey, after what Trey Burke doing to them boys. Like, come on. Back but I don't, know if, I don't even know if Trey, I mean, Trey uh, Burke is small, though. Trey Burke, 5'11". Five, five he just looks that small, man. No, he's about 5'11", though. If you that, Googled it? You, you Googled it? I'm telling you, he's about, about 5'11". I'm going to pull it up right now, big bro. Let me yeah, tell you. I, Let me tell you. Let's see. Trey Burke. I'm sure somebody probably didn't put it in the tread already. You know, we go to the tread. They're like, oh, we got it already. Right, but. I'm going to tell I'm, you how, how tall Trey Burke is right now because he's not. Yeah, you say your phone, your, your cricket down. <laughs> that's, that, that, Trey Burke, that, that, Trey Burke height. You got, you got to go. You got to get us a sponsorship for cricket, man. You use the cricket phone. You gotta... <laughs> uh, not only can Marvin Liberty play ball, he's a comedian too. A six-eight comedian, man. Oh man, dude. But uh, oh man, Tim, Tim just texted me. Oh man. I... I didn't get your text, Tim. Tim, that's Tim said Bo Wright was his guy. Ryan was his guy. Uh, so Ryan, uh, Tim said, "What's up, man?" Tim I, Anderson. Yeah, Tim said. Tim Anderson said, "What's up to to Ryan, man?" But uh, but Trey Trey Burke, like he said, he was just the right place, the right time. He was a lottery pick. Um, he's doing well for that. Man. I mean, he's coming in and putting up numbers. He was used to their system already because they said he was there. Uh, and then they he's, look, he, he he is, he's six feet, same height as Ryan. Right. Same age, too, 27. Right. He said they came in at the same time. Yeah. You know, so, but it's just guys like that, man, I think gets a bad rap. Uh, the people don't really get that opportunity to really see, to really take a hard look and see. And you know, I think Ryan can help some, man, really. I think he can help. Some team out there in the NBA, all you need is one team to really like you. So, <laughs> so I think that can happen. Now, this is a guards league right now, man. And Lord knows it's only, live realistically, what is it? Every year, three to four teams that makes it to the deck that we can honestly say it's going to make it to the championship and win it. Lakers. Clippers. Right. Who else? So the rest of them 27 teams, y'all can use a real point guard, man. You know? No, it's not even that, though, Bob. I think it's just the best player, you know, and I think Ryan can play, you know. So whether you put that, that <coughs> pain behind it, PG, it's not that no more, man. They just they just balling. You got LeBron bringing it up. You got Luka. Luka is, what, 6'8", 6'7", 6'8"? Right, right. It, it, it's not that. So it, it's I'm, positionless I'm gonna, basketball. Right, I'm not going to say they looking for that. Uh, they need that PG. They need a ball player. You know, and I think right. Ryan is a ball player. He's a proven winner, one right. at UConn. So he's a proven winner. I think it's just, you know, you, you just need that opportunity. You need that door to open. 
Yeah, get that name back out here circulating too. Yeah. You know, because out of sight, out of mind sometimes. You know how it go. <laughs> but uh Chicago, but yeah, we could use them too. Yeah, so, man. Yeah, the Bulls. You're right. Uh, definitely use them. So man, we had another good one, man. I appreciate Ryan coming on and and, and doing it and, and actually sharing uh, some some knowledge, man, to, to our next generation of hoopers, <coughs> letting it know, letting us know that. You know, it's, it's funny that he said what he had said it toward the end about business, you know, in basketball. Because yeah. if you never had nobody that been there and done that, meaning from your neighborhood, like I never had that. So you always was like, I just love it. You know, mm -hmm. I was I was loving the game. You're loving the game. You're loving the game. And then all of a sudden you start getting bigger. You know, the game starts to change a little bit. It becomes not no more playground. So now – Looking at it like, oh, now I'm in college. Now I got banners and I got posters and I got jerseys with my name on it. And now you're looking at the business side of it. But yeah, if you can get somebody to teach you that at a young age, I think it will help you down the road. Right. Oh, somebody said uh, Burke took uh, Jalen Bronson's spot. That's because he was hurt. That's right. He was hurt. But that's still at the right place at the right time. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, Yeah. That could have easily been uh, Ryan you know, getting that, yeah. that, that opportunity uh, to perform and play. But it's going to happen, do. man. Could do, man. Dude, man. Yeah. Dude, so man. any other shout-outs, out, shout outs, man? Because, you know, we don't we, we forgot about doing our shout-outs. Give shout-outs uh, to people. We that's, got Dimitri Freeling. Um, shout out to him, man. Uh, Lefty Boy chimed in. One of my favorite players out of Chicago land. Glover Love, that's right. He's right there on Madison. Um, Glover Love, shout out to him. Jamal Brown. Uh, Al Hughes. Is this Al Frederick Hughes? Yeah. Keep up the yeah. good work. Al Frederick Hughes, we waiting on you, man. You was a walking bucket. We remember you. I remember watching you playing in Chicago State. Uh, Max Jr., uh, Sharon Shorty Collins. Sharon Collins chimed in, Liv. We're going to get Sharon Collins on here, right? Yeah, I got Sharon. I already inboxed him, so I'm just waiting on his email. Once he hit me back with his email, we can get him on next week. Uh, okay. So, so I'm going to try to confirm that for the week out that we can get him on. Uh, maybe we can get his, co his coach on, too, uh, Jaren's, Jaren's on. Uh, uh, James Johnson, Richard Hill, Jeremy Newton. T Down Garmin, Devin Foster, Thomas Stevens Jones, Max Jr. Shout out to all y'all, man, for watching the show. Appreciate that, man. And now, man, you know what else I wanna I wanna see and uh see if some of our listeners, you know, basketball junkies, how many guys from the Chicago, no, let's say the state of Illinois, have won national championships in basketball in college on the college level and it could be male or female you know how many people have won who played basketball in the state of illinois who won a national championship i would love to know how many that'd be a good one uh players that won i know we have one on Bo Ellis, uh, and then we got another one on just now ryan bow right ryan bow right and then we had Morgan Tuck, who won not just one, but one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> not one, not two. <laughs> I just want to know Isaiah Thomas. I know he won. He won one. Yeah. So I would like to know how many, you know, and they can go all the way back into the back in the day. So I just want to know my basketball junkies out there. Put it on our page, you know, on our Facebook group page, All Ball Chicago. Put it on there. If you know the answer, you know how many it, 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 it was, that would be great. Yeah, buddy. All right, man. So I'm going to work on trying to get Jordy on. So Ron, man. And, uh, and then we got our grand finale, man. I'm trying to convince y'all. Hit, hit the page and convince Marcus Liberty, the host. To tell him we want to do a three hour. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shoot, man. No three hours. No, no three hours. Yeah. But we're going to do a marathon show, man. We're trying to figure out some ideas on how we want to do our 50th show. So if y'all got some ideas, let us know. 
because we yeah. have so many people on here. We we don't want to leave anybody out. So if we have to do a different sessions for the show, like for our 50th anniversary show, I have to invite different groups on and do multiple shows. That might be an idea. Right. Yeah, yep. man. So it was a good one, man. Another one, good one, man. Appreciate it again, man. Ryan Boltwright joining us, man, on here on All Ball Chicago. He did his thing. And um, I got to get out and of here. I got the school. legend. And I got the MVP veteran, the McDonald's All American Market Liberty. What you finna be on, big baby? Got to give you that look away. I got to give you that that uh, Ryan Boltwright look away. Oh. Oh, no. And I know no, what he... to do with it. I'm <laughs> gripping it. Like, man, no, you weren't gripping, guys. Man, they told me. Everybody I talked to said, Bob had that little crossover. When he, he take it out like this. <laughs> Everybody I talked to, they said, man, Bob had game, man. Bob had that crossover when he go like, he take that ball way out there, dude. <laughs> Just break the ground with it. <laughs> I got to make sure I cross you out the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a good one, Morgan Liberty. Yes, I'm up out of here. I gotta go give me some tea, man. God bless y'all. Right. Believe Podcast Network. Peace. Peace. I holla.